but this is the point that I think needs to be made. Democrats have a ton of money. They got Wisconsin Dems up two, Pennsylvania up nine, Arizona up six, Ohio up four, Michigan up five, which is the race we started with for this conversation. But this is the make or break moment. If we don't get it here, you know, 26 and 28 obviously are cycles that we'll have to contest. We've got more vulnerability on our side in, in terms of some of the races that will be up that year. But we see this as for the, for the sake of our, our country, um, trying to win the trifecta, the House, the Senate, and the White House is enormously important. We need all three. Two Fox News hosts grilled a visibly nervous top Senate Republican about potentially game-changing weaknesses in his party's efforts to reclaim the Senate majority. Another reporting recently broke about the same Republican, indicating that if Vice President Harris becomes president and Republicans retake the Senate majority, they will block all of her Supreme Court nominees throughout her presidency. It's very dangerous and we have to talk about it. But before we do, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have a lot to talk about here. And this clip uh, that I'm going to play, it's about two, two and a half minutes long. It's an exchange between Senator John Thune, who is the Republican minority whip. He's part of the Republican Senate leadership and someone who may replace Mitch McConnell as the Republican leader once McConnell retires from leadership after the election. McConnell's basically going to pull a Nancy Pelosi, where he's at least going to serve out the remainder of his senatorial term but he's not going to be leader anymore. Kind of like how Nancy Pelosi is behaving in Congress. She's no longer part of the Democratic leadership, but she is still serving as one of California's representatives to the House of Representatives. It's basically what McConnell's doing. This guy may take his place. And so what he has to say is really important. In this clip, he's being grilled by Bill Hemmer and Dana Perino, two conservative Fox News hosts who desperately want the Republicans to retake the Senate majority, pointing out some serious vulnerabilities in that effort, even though, and I have to emphasize this, the Republicans are favored to retake the Senate majority. It's not set in stone. It's not like 99% likely, but they are more likely than not to win the Senate majority. We have to prevent that for reasons we'll get into. But it's also important to note that John Thune is actually kind of nervous here, and he's being grilled about the serious weaknesses in his party's efforts. So we're going to uh, play the clip and unpack it together. Here, let's look at number two, guys. Then we'll look at number four. This is the point that I think needs to be made. Democrats have a ton of money. I mean, it's two to one in Michigan, right? All the way across the board, Arizona through Wisconsin. Here is where the New York Times has these battleground states. They got Wisconsin Dems up two. Pennsylvania up nine, Arizona up six, Ohio up four, Michigan up five, which is the race we started with for this conversation. Do you want to counter on that or not? Well, you, those polls right now, I think, reflect, and they're mostly, in, in most cases, they're margin of error races, right? And the polls, in, historically, at least in the last couple of elections, particularly when Trump's on the ballot, really underestimate, I think, the Trump vote. The folks were going to come out and support the president and uh, in our in, in, in our uh, candidates, the United States Senate races, it doesn't make any sense if you're for President Trump not to give him a Republican Senate to work with. Otherwise, the Democrats are going to be blocking him for the next four years. So, so uh, there's more that he has to say, but I just want to break down a couple of things. So, number one, keep this in mind. This Senate map is really brutal for Democrats. It really is in the sense that we have multiple incumbents and Republicans need only flip two. If they win two uh, seats away from incumbent Democrats, they win the Republican majority no matter who becomes president. So John Tester of Montana is a very vulnerable Democrat, OK, and currently favored to lose. Now, again, it's not like 99 percent likely, but the odds are currently against him. So let's just grant them that. That's one. West Virginia, um, by, held by Joe Manchin, he is no longer seeking office. So if he, uh, you know, since he's no longer seeking office, a Republican will take West Virginia because it's just basically impossible for a Democrat to win. So if they take West Virginia and Montana, that could be the ball game. Uh, the good news is Sherrod Brown in Ohio, which is probably the other most vulnerable incumbent Democrat, is currently up in aggregate by four. Now, again, that's relatively close to the margin of error, so we could lose Ohio too. But the point is, folks, we have to protect everything. We have such a slim margin for error. And I'm pretty sure if we're all, we will lose West Virginia, because again, Manchin's not running for re-election. But if we lose West Virginia and Montana, as is the case, that's it for us. So we have to protect Montana, or this is the big one, we need to flip Texas away from Ted Cruz 
and Florida away from Rick Scott, which is why the Democrats are actually investing considerable sums of money into those competitive races. Again, the Republicans are currently favored to win re-election in Texas and Florida, but it's close enough that we could theoretically lose Montana and pick up Texas or lose Montana and pick up Florida or lose Montana and pick up Florida and Texas, right? So again, just keep this in mind. If they take two from us, they win. Keep that in mind. I'll also say that Thune's argument here, which is, listen, if you're going to vote for Donald Trump, you should vote for a Republican Senate. That does make sense if you're a Republican voter. Likewise, if you're a Democratic voter and you're voting for Vice President Harris, you should also vote for Democrats in every jurisdiction because what you do not want is divided government, particularly under these bad faith Republicans. So uh, I think there's a very close correlation between how the president performs in those states. These Senate races, which started out a little bit behind the president, are starting to tighten. And if you look at historically, the correlation between how the top of the ticket performs and how those down ballot races perform, it's gotten, it's gotten closer and closer through the years. So I think it bodes well. I think we're set up really well not only to get the majority, but to win some, some seats that would give us a bigger majority. And Obviously, an we have to one. execute. A an enduring majority, because I was looking that uh, piece last week that if Republicans take over this time, given the states that are up the next two or f four or six years, it is likely that Republicans would then still be in the advantage. So if they can get the majority this time, the likelihood of being able to hold it over a longer period of time is greater. Is that correct? Well, yeah, that's true. And as you know, Dana, it's enormously important. But this is the make or break moment. If we don't get it here, you know, 26 and 28, obviously, are cycles that we'll have to contest. We've got more vulnerability on our side in, in terms of some of the races that will be up that year. But we see this as, for the, for the sake of our, our country, um, trying to win the trifecta of the House, the Senate, and the White House is enormously important. We need all three, but at a minimum, we need the United States Senate as a check and balance. And, and historically, that's what it's proven to be. <clears throat> it is the quintessential um, sort of insurance policy, I think, for people in this country to prevent a lot of bad things from bad Democrat policies from happening. So there you go. Again, a visibly nervous John Thune. You know, he's looking down a lot. He's looking away a lot. And to me, that betrays an insecurity, even though they're favored to win currently, given the low threshold for Republican winning. Again, they need only flip. It's not like they have to win every election. They need only flip two seats away from the Democrats. I think it says something that he knows that there are serious vulnerabilities that Democrats are out fundraising the Republicans, out spending the Republicans, and in more swing states than not, and in more elections than not, we are currently ahead. But again, they need to only flip two. I also think it's important to note that he's offering a word of caution to Fox viewers and Republican voters that this is the make or break moment because uh, subsequent Senate races, uh, you know, again, 2026, 2028, it's going to be different. Right now, 2024 is a brutal reelection map for Democrats, but 2026 and 2028, those are better maps for Democrats when it comes to Senate races. And that's why John Thune is saying that, like, hey, Republicans have to win the Senate now in order to have an incumbency advantage going into 2026 and 2028 because the odds are against them. We have to deprive them of that, folks. We have to deprive them of that because it significantly reduces their likelihood of winning subsequent Senate elections. The other reason that we have to stop them from winning the Senate majority, he kind of hints at it, John Thune does. Um, at the very end there, like, you know, we need we want to win. We want to win a trifecta. But at the very least, we have to win the United States Senate, he says, to effectively obstruct a Republican, excuse me, a Democratic president. And CNN recently broke reporting on this. Potential President Harris could face Senate GOP roadblock for any Supreme Court pick any. So the next president could have the power to dramatically reshape the Supreme Court with one or more appointments. But for Kamala Harris, that might not be possible. If Republicans regain control of the Senate, a President Harris would have to rely on the next GOP leader to schedule a vote on a Supreme Court nominee. Think about that, folks. These things are not automatically scheduled. If you have a Democratic president and a Republican Senate majority leader acting in bad faith, as Mitch McConnell has, they could simply obstruct, which is what Mitch McConnell did with President Obama and uh, President Obama's Supreme Court nominee, current Attorney General Merrick Garland, after the death of Antonin Scalia. McConnell knew that if it came down to a floor vote, uh, Garland was so popular and so respected and so centrist and moderate that he would be confirmed. And so McConnell prevented that by simply preventing a vote. It's not like they had a vote and Republicans voted against the nominee, which is their right. You know, your presidents are not automatically obligated to having their nominees confirmed, right? If, if, if a Republican president offers a lunatic Supreme Court justice nominee, 
Democrats have every right to say, no, this guy's crazy. Pick a different one. And, and likewise, Republicans, too. But McConnell didn't do that. McConnell prevented a vote because he knew the vote would pass for Garland. So that's the sort of bad faith. In interviews with CNN last week, two leading candidates to replace Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell would not commit to putting a Harris Supreme Court nominee on the floor for a confirmation vote. Quote, it depends, Texas Senator John Cornyn said when asked if a Harris Supreme Court pick would get through, would get a vote in the Senate that he would lead. Quote, obviously, they would have to go through the committee process, and so it would depend on that. And then I think it would also depend on who the president nominates. Cornyn added, quote, if I'm in a position to make the decision, I'm not going to schedule a vote on some wild-eyed radical nominee, which I know she would love to nominate, but that would be my intention, end quote. Senate GOP whip John Thune, the person who was in the clip earlier, a South Dakota Republican, had a similar refrain. Quote, we'll, cro we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, Thune said when asked last week if he'd allow a Harris Supreme Court pick to be confirmed. Quote, but you know, it probably depends on who it is, and that's the advantage of having a Republican Senate, end quote. These partisans are the latest sign of how the Supreme Court confirmation process has devolved into an all-out partisan affair, a far cry from the days when presidents would routinely get their nominations confirmed, even by a Senate controlled by the opposite party. While each side blames the other for the breakdown, McConnell's 2016 decision to leave vacant the seat of the late Justice Antonin Scalia for more than a year, effectively robbing then-President Obama of a Supreme Court seat, continues to reverberate in the Senate. Folks, I want to be very clear about this. You know the history. McConnell said, hey, it's an election year. We're not going to have a vote. We're going to let the pr next president decide. It's an election year. It's 2016. Then in 2020, also an election year, he allowed the uh, nomination, confirmation, and vote of Justice Amy, Co Amy Coney Barrett mere days before the 2020 election, right? So he completely, he, he engaged in total double standards and hypocrisy, um, but he had the power. So he, he's not obligated. He changed the rules and then broke his own rule. Right. All for the sake of political expedience. Why should we believe that these Senate Republicans would do anything else? Why should we believe that? Oh, don't worry. As long as it's not an election year, Josiah, why should we trust that? What what is preventing Republicans from saying, you know what? If it's a year before an election year, it's still kind of too close to the election. We really just need to let the next president decide. You know what? It's the year before the year before an election year. That's still like that's basically close to, you know, an election year. We should probably ne let the next president decide. You know what? There's a waning gibbous moon the night before a confirmation vote could be held. Constitution doesn't say anything about the, the phases of the moon. I don't know what I mean. We, it's kind of like we should only have votes for, for full moon, you know, uh, moon cycles, right? <sighs> They could come up with any excuse, and there's nothing we could do to stop them. And that is why, my friends, knowing the depths of bad faith, the total lack of principle, the Republican majority, it is incumbent on us to not only elect Vice President Harris to the presidency, not only elect Hakeem Jeffries to the speakership of the House of Representatives, it's also important for Democrats to maintain and potentially even expand their Democratic majority in the Senate because Republicans will not play fair. They will not act on principle. They will not behave in good faith. And they've proven it time and time again. We should not trust them. They do not deserve our trust. And that is why, in my opinion, if you're an eligible voter, no matter where you are, no matter what office, you should vote blue in November. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.